it. This is Palace de Chilarino. This is part two of what we do every Thursday night. I'm sitting here with Tutu and the Pirates. Yay! Hey! Yay! Hi, everybody! Yay! And we'll start with introductions. Frankie Paradise. And you play? Bass. Shaja Madoff, guitar. I'm Little Richie Speck. And I'm the most wonderful thing in the world. <laughs> I'm special. Here, here. My name is Benny Crocker. <laughs> you make Not a mean cake, cakes. I hear. <laughs> <laughs> one he time. Make it, he makes a great cake. He does. One time. He's, he's awesome. He's really good. Yeah. That's about his muffin time. Mel Torment, <laughs> other guitar, <laughs> my mother's son. Yay. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining me. I'm super stoked that you decided to come and play in my fucking basement and that we actually got the opportunity a couple years ago when you reformed a, your first show that we got to interview you all. Um, but now let's, you know, fast forward those two years. Um, we'll start with when did you form? So all of those people out there watching and listening and like, what the fuck she talking about? They're iconic. When did you start? Initially, originally. So, uh, 77? 77, yeah. The, the summer of 77, we started getting together. Um, Frankie and our, our, our former guitar player, Jimmy Socket. Retired. Yeah, he's retired. retired. When, he retired. Came back, when he came back from uh, England. Europe, yeah. Yeah, so they, so they, were, they were both came, came out of music school, and they, they wanted to start a... He, Jim, Jimmy had, had witnessed the birth of punk in, in Europe. Britain. Yeah, and and so he came over and he said, "Oh, let's let's do a punk band." So they, they, we, I ran to Frankie at an all night party at so at the Howard Johnson's motel, <laughs> and I was I was I was, they, I was singing my my dirty country and western songs I used to make up. That's right. Way. That's right. And he was like, "You should be our singer." <laughs> and that's how we started. That's and I right. said, well, I know a couple of guys, and I knew Mel no. and Tutu, Tutu, the drummer, and so that's how yeah. that's how it started. And so we started getting together in Tutu's basement, and uh, and that by the end of the summer we had a, we were we playing out. Yeah, yeah. And there was no really punk bands in Chicago at the mm -hmm. time, and so uh, at the, we for our first gig, well, our first gig, <laughs> our, our first gig was at Kendall College. Before it was a cooking school, <laughs> and this was their, their main their main thing. Then was they were they had uh, all these Iranian students who were learning law enforcement. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> to go back and work for the, the Ayatollah, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> and so our first gig, I was going, I was taking classes there. I took classes. I didn't, never got anywhere. But, uh, <laughs> but so so we knew the guy who ran the student union. So we got our first gig there. Was that Kurt? Kirk, yeah, Kirk yeah, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. play, we 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 set up in the student union on Friday night, and the only people who came out were all the Iranian guys who lived on campus, <laughs> and they're all men, and they all like sat around the perimeter of the room like this, you know. There's nobody. They were guarding there. the perimeter. They were just like they were, they were, they were they trained they were very well. And, and we were so nervous, and we're in the dressing room like like doing coke and drinking vodka and like, like oh, and we got out there and like I'm forgetting all the words and we're like it was just a total fucking catastrophe. It was fantastic. But, but the reaction, the the reaction the was, was amazing. The reaction was like really. You know, it was <laughs> fantastic. There was no reaction. And Jimmy had that coiled cord, so every time he stepped up, the cord would look unplugged. He'd run back and play for the So that so that was our first gig, and it was like it was ridiculous. And so then we played a big punk. punk party yeah in, in the in, basement in, 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 a, in a basement yeah, loft, yeah. of a loft building it was like uh, was La Mer was the place La Mer was the di the the punk club dance, dance club yeah so they didn't really have the bands only. there yeah they had uh, some 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 uh, Beluga used to do his well, it was, it was, yeah. a, it was yeah. a gay bar they did punk nights on Sunday on Sunday that's how they yeah. started right yeah. <laughs> And that's <laughs> the most fun thing ever. Yeah, and it was—I it, mean, it was—it was—it was, it was really? amazing. I, I, you know, yeah, I got back to town from California, and I went down there, and I was like—I was dressed like a cowboy, and I was like, they liked me. Of course <laughs> they did. <laughs> they were like, "Hey, boo, what's she doing after?" And I'm like, but the music was all this, you know, like, eh, you know, in the player with because because nobody really—they were just inventing what punk was. So there was the, the Stooges, and there was Bowie, and there was you know like the New York Dolls. Which are bands that were, you know, they were playing music from like five, six years earlier, which really wasn't punk. 
but that's they had to fill out the roster because there was only right. so many Sex Pistols and. And those girls right. didn't get any airplay. What's so, that? And they didn't get any airplay. Nobody knew it. No, yeah, right. no. And so the guys who work at the record store were the DJs, and they they knew the stuff. Yeah, that's they true. did. So so Lemare, so everybody colonized La Mer, and then they would start having these parties outside of La Mer because. You know, it was just like you didn't you didn't have to all converge in that one area, and so they our our first gig in front of the the peeps was at at, at, and at uh, one of these loft parties, and the minute we played, we got on, they went crazy. It was and fun, it, and it was that was the beginning of it. And yeah. you know, we we were like, okay, yeah. it, it's working. So you know, it, it was uh, that was seventy seven, the summer set, the end of the summer seventy seven. That was actually December. Yeah. Was it that late? Yeah. 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 So where did you go from there? How long as the no, original? We went home. And then we had to... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean after the show, goddammit. We, we went in this, no, we went in the studio. We recorded uh, Son of Sam, uh, oh, yeah. Delinquent Rat. Yeah. Uh, right, and, and do it, uh, or, uh, oh no. Do Me Harm. Do Me Harm. And uh, Jenny. Jenny. Yeah. Jenny. Jenny's a good song. We should do yeah. Jenny. Yeah. Well, you only you gotta have two two to do Jenny. Oh, yeah. that's right, yeah. <laughs> because you, yeah, the, the, the beat is a little... <laughs> So Can't yeah, we went to the studio. Me. We we recorded uh, uh, four songs. We put it on a cassette. In fact, they played it at La Mer. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then we then it, everything just took off after that. Yeah, and we were, you know and we're for taking you had off, to break the clubs too because they weren't ready for we were, stuff. Yeah, right. We were, so we had to we had to play like in the suburbs and stuff like this, you know, because nobody. I mean, the city clubs were not. We, we our first booking was at that. Like Luigi's or something on Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln yeah. Avenue. Right? Yeah, right, right. And, and yeah. After, after the first night, he kind of goes, You're chasing away all my regular customers. <laughs> he knows. So, he knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did he know? Did he know? Did he Yeah, did he pass not to play the second night? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That happened more than often than once. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's, so, you were a band for how long before you decided to disband? Uh, probably oh. uh, about three years, maybe right? two and a half, three years, something like that. Yeah, yeah. maybe a year and a half. <laughs> it seems uh, <laughs> it went really fast. Eighty-one. It was, it was eight, about it was, was it about, it was about yeah, three and a half. It was about three and a half years. Okay, yeah, it was about, it was <laughs> it's least, longer yeah, than I thought. Then okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you know that <laughs> just to date myself, you were a band and then not a band, and I wasn't even alive yet. <laughs> 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 um, but I most, think most of the girls we know are the same. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's important because there's a lot of people now with, a, I would say, a resurgence, a very strong call to want to do this music again. Mm -hmm. So what is it like now coming back? A, why did you come back? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, right? <laughs> and, and, and B, what's it like now? What is the scene like for you watching it now evolve from when you started it to where it is now? These are hard questions. We didn't really start it. We oh. just played well, at the same time that. as it was going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's really. It's not like, you know, we started it. There were guys in, you know, Europe doing it. But it was fun to be part but of it. But there was a really a lot stuff. of things locally. No, there was As a matter of fact. Don't discredit um, the historical nature of the significance of what you are music-wise within your if own they do, city. I don't. Well, yeah. well we, had a, <laughs> we, had, we had a um, a converted machine shop uh, on Fullerton that we uh, tagged as Tutu's Placenta. That was our, our <laughs> rehearsal place. And, uh, and, and, in order, and, and people didn't know, but in order to supplement <laughs> our rent, um, we threw these shows because there wasn't any really any places to play in the city uh, to play right. punk. Right, there so the there's no punk places. So we promoted a lot right. of bands. Um, Silver and, and, and gave them, Yeah, Silver and Views played their first right. show. And, uh, and, uh, and all those bands. A lot yeah, of the bands... Yeah. Played their first shows in Tutu's Placenta, and it was we'd get written up in the reader. You know, it was like it was to be a big thing, like you know, Chicago bands versus the New York bands, because we'd be playing on the same night right. as like these New York, you know, the Tough Darts or somebody would be coming to town, and they go, Chicago wins, you know, and like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was crazy. I mean, Chicago was really rugged then. I mean, it was really this is the mid seventies. And it was. It, 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 it was, was, it was. I remember stepping over all the blood when we go to the bar. It was dark. It, <laughs> it was, was. It was. It was bad. It, you know. I mean, everywhere was really. You know, like desperate, desperate individuals. So, it, it was. It was really fun. I mean, I kind of miss that about Chicago. It's, I think it's cleaned up too way much. too much. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I yes. miss, Has I miss, punk become polite? 
Well, I don't, I, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I don't, I gotta be honest, I, you know, I, I don't know that any of us, maybe, maybe some of us, <laughs> <laughs> follow as much of the punk scene in, in our town as, as you know. As we the, play as with the, some guys some, sometimes, but there's a lot more going on than we actually know about, I imagine. Right, yeah. right, we kind of get plopped in there now to just kind of, you know, Fill it lend credence like, to something or right, whatever. Right, right. But the resurgence is really exciting for me. I, I, you know, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on right now. And the kids are great. Yeah. Who we do yeah. run yeah. into? Yeah, no, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We, we, it's, be, it's really better. Really it's better because we're not so fucked up. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I mean, emotionally, <laughs> not, and we're not as high. <laughs> we're not, you know. Some of us. That's all better. I mean, mm, yeah. just kidding. Just kidding. No, it's 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 just uh, the, it, we appreciate it so much now, and the fact that we can still get away with it. Is crazy. Yeah. Would you say that you and the other folks that were in bands similar to you that paved the way that allows this music to actually exist in your city? As a latecomer in this band, there are no other bands like this. No. <laughs> I don't hear anything like this. No. We, I, well, it, it, it got really the, when when after we were doing our thing and we quit around 1980, there was a breath. And then, like '82 or whatever year it was, just opened up. All, all, the, all, all, the, places, all yeah. the all the younger brothers of the bands that we were in, you know, that we knew, they all came along and they did this. They did it, but the it was yeah. really, really, really. Um, I don't know. By there was the no fun. Stuff. It wasn't fun. Yeah, yeah, it's not, hardcore. It, it was. Hardcore. It was really hardcore. It there was, were a lot of rules. There were a lot of rules. Lot of and rules. it was really. It, it was yeah. It, and it was like you know the slam dancing thing. I can I can dig all that stuff. But th there was just like this whole machismo thing that was going on. That was like not I can't, like the I can't even think stuff. that we can say was. I can't think. Well, I, I, I don't think that we can talk in past tense uh, because it's very very prevalent. I would say in the still. punk scene now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There is an attitude and an ego that I think permeates a lot of the Midwest in regards to punk music. Uh, they think that we do it better, we do it faster, and a lot of times, in, at least in my experience, and you know, having gone and seen shows, everybody almost sounds the same. Yeah. Finding originality is very hard, and I don't know, and it's always kind of this weird ideology that it's me, me, me. And it's my band only, and I don't even care who else is on the bill. But there's almost like a lack of respect that comes along with trying to create a musical community. And anybody that we've talked to from Chicago kind of feels the same way. There's been a very niche group yeah. that has said recently that they're trying very hard to build that brotherhood back up, or sisterhood, or whatever you want to call it, camaraderie. Right. There you go. Um, because Chicago music in general, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, With your massive, 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 mm -hmm. massive yeah. niche groups and everything. yeah, that's the whole. That is, it, it, it's, it's, that's it's why Chicago has never been. I don't think that's why. Other than other than the blues and gospel and you know that you know, I, I think Chicago's always way behind on uh, because of whatever it is. I I don't know. I mean, like. The, the bands, I, I loved it when the Foo Fighters traveled the world and j exposed all these cities, and the band from Chicago they chose was Cheap Trick, who came from Rockford. <laughs> you know, and I was like, that's the Chicago band, that's the Chicago rock and roll band. I'm like, no, not so much. <laughs> they had to go to Rockford to get the Chicago rock and roll band. Is it easier to be booked now than it was before? Uh, I think it's different. We, no, no there, we we had a period of time where we were playing all the time. Yeah, and not, not that that's what we're looking to do we, now. Yeah, so we much. played 18, 20 dates a month. There was a, there was a whole string of a couple of years. Where we, <laughs> yeah, and we it was all bouncing out, around, you know, the suburbs, and, the, and then we we sometimes we travel to Minnesota or, or or you know Ohio. And uh, big on college campus. We were never big. At, we, 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 we 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 our experiences <laughs> in Wisconsin. <laughs> the first time, the first time we played, we played in this room that uh, it was right when like the Violent Femmes were huge mm -hmm. in Milwaukee. What was the name of that place? Yeah. I don't fucking remember. Yeah. <laughs> I was and and it was like there was like they, there was like four <laughs> girls in there, and they made it a point of just like standing with their backs to us and talking while we played. <laughs> that was the whole crowd, you know. And it was just like, okay, all right, this is in our this is in our town. Yeah. So then late, later, year, uh, maybe maybe a year or so later, we got booked at the Hooker Lake Inn. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, oh. Which was 
A high point. Now that was that, that was a real thing. The, we, the, it was five dollars all you could all the beer you could drink night. Right. And and two teams of pirates that? playing three sets. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and the stage was above the bar. So it was like on a loft above, oh, above the bar. So all these people would be drinking, you know, they had big kegs in the middle of the room and they're all pouring their own beers and drinking as much as they want in plastic cups and throwing them at us with full of beer. <laughs> and they're good at soaking the bartenders and you know everything's getting good. And, and we're up there playing and we're having a great time because these weren't real glasses because we'd had real glasses. Was he in your glasses? This was the this chamber. Was, this wasn't shit. So, so it's like we're just like up there jamming, you know, like, oh yeah. So we play our two sets and we're in the dressing room getting ready for a third set. And the owner comes in and I swear to God, he's wearing an overcoat over his bathrobe. And he goes, what, what, what the hell's going on here? And we're like, what? You know, he goes, uh, my guys are telling me you almost started a riot out there. And we're like, no, this is, you know, this kind of happens, to, you know, when we play. And he goes, well, how about you don't. You don't play in the, anymore. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Right? We're like, okay. So me, because we had this rule where we didn't drink, or they would not me drink anymore when we played. True. I remember that. Because we recorded ourselves once, and it wasn't so good. And so me, I'm like, oh, now I can drink. So I went down into the crowd, and I, I went to the keg, and everybody's like, come on, man. What are you going to play? Are you going to play some more? We're like, you know, like, no, they won't let us play anymore. Oh, come on, man. So everybody who was, like, hating us and throwing beers at us wanted me to, you know, want to get back. They were heck. Us while we were playing. Wow. Yeah, they were like, why would you guys stop? Yeah. Wanted us to get back up and play. So, so that was kind of gratifying. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, yeah. yeah, the hooker Lincoln. So, wow. so those were our two big. And other than the gig that we did, uh, yeah. what was that? Oh, what embarrassing. Did, what did they call that, that thing? Is, uh, punk picnic. Punk picnic. Oh, mm. all right. Somehow oh, we yeah. our name kept sliding down the list. It's not that it kept <laughs> sliding down. <laughs> oh, no, it did. Dude, I want to talk about the bane that is that existence. <laughs> okay, first off, really good in theory. Second, not well executed, yeah. and only because it is so disorganized. And I understand that. I don't know, maybe because I'm an eight <laughs> I don't care. I said the same thing to Frank. R.I.P. I'm allowed to say it here now because whatever. But I, I'm an eight type personality that's like, if I'm going to book a show, here's the rules. Here are all the rules. We're all going to contribute. We're all going to go on at this right. time. We're going to get on. Here's the set. Yeah. This is what you should do because right. oftentimes. And how that always has been is like, it's just free for you. You, you wait till your band shows up, you write your name, and then you play. Well, you know, the band showed up, and then dude is getting fucked up in the back, or he's fucking his girlfriend, or he's puking, and so now you're like, where's our, our bassist, or our drummer, or whatever, so now we have to like, <laughs> collect them. them again, and then they show up on stage, and then they're like, the sound goes bad, or whatever. So, Sounds like juniors in Pilsen. I, I, <laughs> well, people, yeah. I, I, those people kept button in line in musical line. Well, that, 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 so that, so that was our last time we played. So oh. those are our three. You didn't even play, which was fucking horrible. And then we yeah. had you booked at hat tricks, and like because of that experience, you were like, no. Our, no, our drummer wouldn't do it. He's I know. Like, he he would, probably he would, because of that experience, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Because he would, I no. know. Yeah. It was well, embarrassing. Well, it was horrible. SK came and played. You'd do the gig, right? You'd play anywhere, right? He's just had it. Zero standards. Zero standards. That's, <laughs> that's why he's in the band. Zero standards. Give, him a, has, give him a cannoli, he'll do anything. A cannoli? That's all that it will cost you to have cannoli. I have to say that there has been... Why aren't they here? Yes. December 21st is a potluck show, so if you'd be so kind, it's a um, Yes, it's his birthday party show. Oh. Happy birthday. So I, I would have to say that for me and why I really want to do this is because I want to have a continual progression and evolution of what this music is. It started for a fucking reason. And I don't want to see it die out because we have societally ascribed to these ideologies that we should just be something that other people want. Punk music is supposed to be a rebellion against what is um, considered traditional. And so when you continue to just fall in line as to what other people are doing, you right. are actually doing nothing but becoming the sheep that you were trying to rebel against. Which is why a lot of people in our scene don't like me because <laughs> I tell people to their face these things and then they're like, that's offensive. I'm like, you participate in a subgenre that's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so. You got the whole rap though. Right. I'm like, you, you can't look at me with your.
your mohawk and cry because then I don't, I'm not that mean. I smiled when I said fuck you. So I'll hug you. Do you need one? Here's a tissue. There's no time in the mail, do you? Uh, no, no, Hello. no, no, no. <laughs> but I do have a hoodie to be the... <laughs> With those glasses, it works. I show up to work like that sometimes. I'll sit there what do you my mean, desk. these glasses? Those, uh, <laughs> just the scotch I collect them. So, what made you guys want to reform and start playing music again? Because we felt super lucky that we got to see you. And, I mean, that here, was here. really cool. It was the guy who made the film. I'm lucky and I'm Irish. David? Yeah. No, no Joe Lasorto. Joe Lasorto. Joe. Uh, we, we, had, we had touched on it. Uh, but he beat well, no, well, well, he his actually, girlfriend. It was before the movie. It was, oh, it was? It was when uh, they, the, the Horizontal Action magazine uh -oh. put out the right, history right. of Chicago punk. And, <laughs> and so that Hozak Records is awesome. You're right, you're right, right. And so they put out, and they put they featured us prominently in this thing. And, I, and we were like, okay. you know, well, yeah, well, so okay. we, we went out and we played a 15-minute set at a club. And it was the, fun. The it, was, it was it was a note. Was, yeah. We the were notes. there. No, not the, no, you were not at the note. No, we didn't go to the note? Where was that? This was, this was, it was the Grand Bar. Bar. Grand Bar. Uh, right, right. It was on uh, Milwaukee, now. just south of uh, right. North Athens. Yeah. yeah, so we played, we played like 15 minutes with, with another oh, band that we, oh, a couple of us right. were in, and, you know, and, so, and, and that was, you know, so we had a little taste of it. Taste. And then, you know, then the, then Joe Lucerto and Jill Tillman. Yeah. Uh, made this movie called "You Weren't There," which was about the Chicago punk scene, and the big, and and so we were featured prominently in that. And there were a lot of people saying, "Oh, we were the first punk band," which is a lot of people wouldn't speak to us any longer after they heard that we thought we were the first punk band. <laughs> we didn't make the fucking movie. <laughs> no, we did was, make the movie. Yeah. You weren't there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we were. We were. You know, s featured in the movie. I mean, interviewed me for the movie and other people, but they interviewed a lot of people who all said that Two Two of the Pirates were the first punk band. So that's how that all started. And all, all of a sudden, like people like you know, Skatefish and oh, you know, all furious. these other people yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. wouldn't you know? Oh, they, they think they're all it, which wasn't true. But it was just well, of course it was true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, so so the, this this film you know got got some cred, cred and the, you know it's on you know Netflix and all this other stuff and, and it's very cool and that's and so then we were like all right let's play some gigs and we got you know people were interested in hearing us for a minute. <laughs> you don't think people are interested? Well, in I, I think they are. And just, they, uh, and Joe put together that one show after it was like the after movie. The show at the empty bottle with da, uh, you know, with da. With da, fun. right? Yeah, and that was fun. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, and then we played with death. Yeah, which was right. very cool. Right. I got high with oh, death. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got high with death awesome. in the basement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds. We were with them all night. More romantic than what? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a great Remember show. we went upstairs and there was nobody in the club. Yeah, right. Where did everybody go? And that was really high. Yeah, was a <laughs> Life is wonderful. It is, a good, it is a good marijuana. And we're back there December 13th. Okay? We're at, at the Empty Bottle. Are they? We are. Well, we, we are. are. <laughs> 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 they must have lifted that drink roll, huh? No. But, um, I think yeah, we'll be at the, the December 13th, we're at the Empty Bottle. I want to talk about you weren't there. Okay. How did you come to have that opportunity? How did people seek you out to do that? They Joe, just, yeah, we didn't. We, I, Joe, Joe we, just did Joe the research, and that's how he decided to portray it. That was that was it. Right. I mean, that was his whatever footage he got, whatever footage he took, and whatever cutting he did, mm -hmm. and that was how he decided to angle it, so. Because it, it was weird, I mean, he'd been shooting this thing for about a year, and, and Terry Terry Fox, our buddy, who was also in the movie, he, he kept saying to me, you know, they want to interview you this, for this movie, I'm like, all right, well, you know, like, you know, I'll, you know, and, and it just, he kept saying it to me, I, I'd see him, you know, all the time, and, yeah, you know, nobody, I never got the phone call. <laughs> so I had no idea what was going on with this. And, and so then when, he, when I inter then they did the interview with me, and it was, you know, I'm just trying to be give them honest responses. To their, to their, I had no idea that, that they were kind of like saying that we, you know, that we were a, one of the big, you know, the big. Do you not consider yourself to be one of the big? 
Well, we didn't know how the thing, what, what the project was, so we yeah. didn't realize yeah. what, what, yeah. Was, what it was going to be. <laughs> you know? and, and we was, would redact anything that came out of that film. We didn't make it, and we apologize for butt hurting all of your anything. feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but you belong in a subculture that's about being offensive, so fuck you. Sorry. Well, well, it was funny, though. He's the way he interviewed because he would like say, so you were doing songs like, you know, Freud's fuck. You thought you were gonna get like a big record deal, right? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. We're really the one who put out the record too. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, well, they also the they, they also put out our the, the, well, the record. That, yeah. They organized all that stuff. Yeah, we, we were very fortunate for uh, Joe and Christine's project because we had a lot of like uh, video footage and things like that. We had a lot of things. Artifacts from when we were performing. We never and a lot of anything, and a really. lot of bands didn't have that. Yeah, well, we were too critical. He came to my so work we to, we and delivered those things to me <laughs> so that I could have them. And he's like, "We've never really released anything. It's not anywhere but here." And I was like, "You came to my work to do that." was really cool. So, I mean, I appreciate it because, like, and I'm geeked about this because it's like. I'm a youngin, okay? I love, I love ska and punk music for a specific reason, and those things that sparked my fire, having the opportunity to talk to people who helped found that, really, and create, um, you know, critical thought, and help grow what now I participate in is significant. So it's like, I thank you, because, because had people like yourselves not decided Fuck the mainstream, we're gonna play what we wanna play, there wouldn't continue to be that because people would have fallen in line with whatever would have been popular and continued to play whatever. You cannot have a new sort of genre of music emerge anywhere without somebody trying to take that revolutionary step forward first and say, we're gonna play whatever what we wanna play, and this is called this, and those people who listen to that now, you know, are like, Oh yeah, this is really cool, and I want to do it because of these things. So. Well, that's that's. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, I think that anybody who's doing anything creative, that's the attitude they have to have. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to follow some kind of tr <laughs> trend that's going to be gone in two weeks, you know, you're going to be always going to be very sad about the outcome because you're you're always going to be, behind, you know, you're always going to be behind the curve. So you know, always, you know. I think we were just trying. We were making it up as we went along, and that's what was that was so beautiful about it. And we were we worked really hard. We rehearsed we like did. fucking crazy. We I mean literally we, we were we were, we were five <laughs> five nights a week, you know, like eight hours. Well, yeah, but we much. worked for a while. We I mean we yeah, worked when we first started. Yeah, that's you know, just true. to get. And yeah. we, were, we were working, you know, like we just worked those worked those songs to death. And then when we got out, we were like, you know. I mean, not everybody has to do that. Some people don't no have to play. do that. We had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I you have no to play this? I don't know, man. Now I do. Let's go. Hey, there's actually a theory behind that. If you learn something high, by the way, you actually remember it when you're high again. Uh, same thing goes for test taking. Like yes, that was a th that's So you say you study while you're completely shit-faced? Yeah, you probably take, right you probably take the test better. Should <laughs> 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 on that. As I'm laughing, how did I, how did I miss that? that? Open on the test. <laughs> you know. Um, so, with now having a record, who do you record with, and do you do everything yourselves? Yeah, let's talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say it's his fault. Well. It. He did it. <laughs> He's got a beautiful studio. No, when when I uh, when I joined the band and I learned the songs off the old cassettes or whatever, the old recordings, and I I started learning them, I'm like, oh, this stuff isn't like three chords. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like simple. It was difficult. And then I'd play them. I'd sit down with Mel. And he's like, no, 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 you're playing it all wrong. I can't even hear it on the record. Well, it appears simple. It's, it's just like, it's, 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 it appears simple, it's, simple but it's not. But it, yeah. It's more like, I always say, it's punk rock meets Frank Zappa. That's what yes. It, yes. You, that was an influence, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there's so much. So, you came and gave us this stuff, and we listened to it, and I was listening to it today, and we're on the way to work, and we're dropping the kids off and whatever, and I looked at Kip, and I was like, you know what? This is pretty advanced and progressive for A, the time frame, and B, the genre in which you 
have ascribed a status to, because it is traditionally like a three chord, okay, you know, yeah. and it's not. Your music is far more advanced. Well, that's a part of the, I think the uh, do whatever we want. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you 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 look for the opportunities to, to to mess with it. You know, and it's like so. So I mean, but there's there's certain beauty to like you know the, the really straight you know like jerk it. Jerk it. I love that. Which Mel no, no, no came in with that, and it was, it was like, you know, perfect. He wanted a song fun. that sounded like 19. He goes, I want, I want a song that sounds like the 77 Pirates. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Or, or, or the 70 second, 72 yeah. Stooges. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, so, so there's, but, but, but we, you know, there's, I think, I think you got to have a, a, rock and roll always had a, a, a sense of humor to me. And so does the best of anything. If I go to see a, a jazz group jam, mm. I'm laughing all the time because these guys are doing riffs and doing riffs and stuff like that that they're enjoying because it makes them happy. And it right. makes me happy to hear make, that they're making me. So, so to me, it was always a fun time. We're going to go party. We're going to go rock and, you know, rock and roll is fun. Mm -hmm. It oh. doesn't have to be so dark and, uh, you know. Serious? Yeah. You mean, hold on, wait. I don't have the leather jacket or the boots for this, but uh, you got to stand like this a little bit and talk to people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like your nose is this long, and then you're like, but I like Scott. I don't like Scott. So then you do that, and you jazz hands it a bit, and they're like, I don't know how to handle that. <laughs> Smile, and you'll feel better. Well, well and that, and that when we first started, and we'd be playing these battle of the bands, and all the bands start sounded like sticks, you know, and then they, and then we come out, true, and then we come, then we come out and do our fucking horrible thing. And, and they would be like so offended. The audience was so offended. The club owners were so offended. They, they, they threw money. Then we, we, got, they, we got paid like 50 bucks at that thing. And the guy just threw the money at Frankie. He goes, they'll oh. oh. never play here again. <laughs> and we were there a month later. And we were playing with like, the like, Devo or we the Mormons. We were. Yeah, we were. <laughs> but I mean, it was like they, they were so offended by this thing. They, it was, by everything. You know, the, our costumes, too. Everything. Well, of course, we tried our best. We dragged, we dragged crosses out on stage with us. Which for well, Easter, we got so now. can we do an Easter show? Oh, my <laughs> God! Was, we can do a zombie Easter party. Please! That was our Easter show. We did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. had a sump pump. It was a little rusty sump pump with a rubber hose, and he was whipping us with it. Wow. That was as we walked out. To the singing nun. To the singing nun. Nika, 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 We had that playing over. And so they were offended by this. Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> they killed uh, rabbits. I mean, people took their music very seriously, and and they, they and they, they, I think they I, I'm sure they still do. You know. Yeah. yeah. But you know, they, it was we, when we started playing, and we get booked for some reason. You know, we'd get an article about us or something. So suddenly, the, some clover would take a chance with us, and it was like <laughs> there were a lot of whoops, <laughs> a lot of bad moments. But uh, we had a great time, and we, you know, learned to play. We adapted. But, we did know, learn to like play. Monopoly. They wanted us to do a. I can't remember. What it was it had to be an X amount of set. Three we sets. Had, yeah, we didn't have enough material, so during one of the sets. We stopped in the middle of the set, and we had like a shrimp cocktail party. <laughs> we, just, wow. we just sat on stage, and had shrimp cocktails for like 10, 15 minutes. And, you know and then Nobody resumed fucking the, noticed. And then they're resumed all, the They're all playing pinball in the other room. Nobody Nobody party party. Was that the show we played with the dictators? Or? No, was that, that, was, no that was another one. But yeah. the same club, though. Yeah, it was yeah, the same. Yeah. I hated it. Have you guys gone on tour? We just would take little Regional. shots to, to, yeah, go, yeah. to you know college towns and stuff. We played <laughs> we played in Minneapolis one time. The, the Stones were on tour, and they were playing small clubs under fake names. Ah. So we played. At the they club were doing in fake events Everybody before thought, people Children on Facebook. That's got to be the Stones. <laughs> <laughs> we had a huge tour. That's awesome. Huge, <laughs> huge, we had a huge tour. You know, catfish people before that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. awesome. It was a huge of course they. I mean, they, they had a they they around for the most part. They, 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 and then we, you know, we play Ohio. We played with the hips. But, uh, yeah, a lot of times in Detroit. Yeah, yeah Detroit. We've been in Detroit times. a lot. Detroit was crazy. We used to play this club called Bookies in Detroit, and our Tutu's father knew this guy, and he was a he was a he was a loan shark, 
who were at this club. Ooh. It's time for the tracheotomy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a church with a priest that I that, that was like, what is wrong I like with you guys. Oh, His yeah. sin was showing. <laughs> <laughs> During the day, Bookies was a transvestite bar. Wow. And then at night, it was yeah. a punk club. So we'd get it there doing our sound check, and they're, I swear to God, they had like these tr transvestites who looked like Alice Cooper, like giving hand jobs to sailors in the booth. With a five o'clock <laughs> show. With a five o'clock show. And we're up there doing our sound check, and like, like whoa. <laughs> And the sailor's like rubbing his hand in their hair, yeah, and the wig's coming off, and he's pulling like, 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 like you guys, you guys, you're right. Oh, wow. <laughs> what what do we pro oh. what what can people project or see from you in the future? Talk about upcoming shows, and do you plan on recording anything new and putting anything out? <laughs> wow, got <laughs> awfully quiet. Yeah, yeah, I'm talk with like, you. I have a tray. Will that make you more comfortable? <laughs> it's the three. We need, we need somebody like you to organize. Hell this. yeah. <laughs> Um, very easily. We're, we're gonna we got a gig on December on December thirteenth with the Empty Bottle, mm -hmm. and uh, we're playing rather early. We're like second up, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, that's so my one complaint. God damn it! Every time I get invited to your fucking shows, you're like seven o'clock. Be punctual, and it's like <laughs> we play out more. Motherfuckers. We're the oldest. We're the oldest guys in the place, and we're playing at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, but it's like, but tops. that 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 you have to be here, and I'm like. Away, and I need to find a sitter and like feed them first before like <laughs> see uh, so it's like I'm not getting there till after you play and I'm it like won't be seven. okay <laughs> yeah that's no. encouraging it's probably nine it'll be seven thirty mm. <laughs> I have time to read to them first all right but that's all we're, that's all we got right now you know I mean we I wouldn't be opposed to recording more more stuff you know I mean it was we really worked hard on that. Believe it or not. <laughs> well, we on that record actually, Debbie, 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 Griff was at the studio at my place, and right. we were probably sixteen. That's and right. he helped us write Debbie, Debbie, Debbie because our drummer wasn't there. We're right. Like, hey, sit down and play. Do you remember that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, that fell together in like fifteen minutes. Yeah, and I'm um, speaking yeah, it was of one of those tunes. Yeah, you know? and Jerk It and Scott. Uh, Jerk It. Our horn player was, uh, we had a horn section, and he, he's yes. here today, and he's from Scapone. Yes. Scabia. We were just talking yeah. about that, because I asked if he had played the Scanthic uh, show that happened at the Metro a couple of years ago, that Kip got to play with MU330 at that show. At uh, Booze, Booze, and Barbecue. Ah, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Same night. Mm -hmm. I could, I, the, they didn't have a, uh, a helicopter in the budget, so I couldn't <laughs> get <it. laughs> Right. Yeah. But speaking of Scapone, they are playing at the Beat Kitchen on the 24th of November as an after Skanksgiving event. Hello. See? Mm -hmm. Ah, I remember things. Water party. Nice. <clears throat> mm, what? That's in December. Calm down. Calm down, dear guy. Um, as far as, like, doing it yourself, you have music on Reverb Nation. Do you have anything else available anywhere that people can find? And what social media platforms are you on? Facebook and the, the records are on iTunes. The old records on iTunes and this one. Both records are on iTunes. Yeah. Here's a big question that I ask everybody. And if I go on a rant, I apologize. I'll give you hugs afterwards. Do you use a distributor to push out your music? CD Baby, Distro Kid. And, CD oh, Baby. Oh, why do you do that? Yeah, we, we don't get we don't get any action from them. Oh, yeah. Zero. So so when you so what kind of contract do you have with them? <coughs> because when you pay your money so that they can distribute it on the fifty plus platforms that they talk about that they can you know post you on, they actually own the rights to your music then. And I have that because I've actually printed contracts out to show bands this. Ugh. And when you play that music, it gets flagged from YouTube saying CD Baby owns your rights. Mm. Nice. <laughs> So interesting. So we're <laughs> so, making no money out of anything. Yeah. We're, we're still getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but the wig's we, we still figured, on. We figured out a so new, we're good. We figured out right? a new way to get fucked. I'm really stick to it. It's a lot drier now. Used to be. <laughs> we, 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 are de we demand our point zero 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 six cents per play. Right. When they make a dollar six. So here's my thing, because yeah. I've been doing this a while now, and I've read these contracts that these distributors use. There is one, uh, Record Union is the name of them. They are a 
really a publishing company that goes under the guise of a distributor. They allow you to be your own publisher so that you... We own our own publisher. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but if you if you give your music or you pay for distro or CD Baby to distribute it, they actually own your rights. So, though you can still play your music, if you ever told them, you know what, I don't want to use you anymore, they will end your contract, but they will still make money off of you, and you will not see those things, and they can own your stuff from three to ten years, depending on how much that you are paying them to put it on the major platforms. But here, so that we can all come full circle, if you have a SoundCloud account or a Bandcamp, and your information is put onto those two platforms, this allows you to be on Spotify and iTunes without having to pay anybody to distribute your music. Because they look for relevance. How many people like your social media? How many hits are you getting normally? But that allows you to maintain your own rights, and it allows you to reap the full royalties of what anybody would click on and pay for that. Wow. So like, using DistroKid or CD Baby, when somebody clicks on that on iTunes, they're going to get 80% 60 to 80% based on what it is that contract's written at, you get 20 to 40. So if your music is a dollar, do the math. You Sounds can get like 20 every cents. every standard contract that I just heard <laughs> but, it, it, yeah. but, but it's unfortunate yeah. because a yeah. lot of people oh, yeah, are, are paying into this idea that I have to pay somebody to do this, and you don't have to. Right. <laughs> you can take all of the... Why I do this is because if you know somebody... Who knows how to use sound equipment or mastering stuff? <laughs> you can take all of the audio from this and do a live album yourself and then just post it. It does not cost any money to be on SoundCloud mm. unless you decide to have a SoundCloud Pro. Right. Yeah. This Sound is like a month, so I think it's like 10 bucks a month. Right. But you still get to maintain all of your own shit. So it's learning now how to use certain platforms to work for you instead of against you. The music industry is permeated with, I would say, wolves who want to fucking Always. be Always. on... But it doesn't have to be if we fucking take it back. Oh. And here's how you can take it back. Yeah. I don't, I'm knife hands in everybody tonight. But, <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is, you make music. It is not for me to, to reap any benefit from what you do. Because I am not the performer. I didn't come up with these songs. I'm not doing anything but giving you an opportunity to share your art with other people. And there should be no reason why I get paid for that. That's bullshit. Kind of like the pay-to-play thing. Fuck all that noise right. and fuck those people. You're weak individuals who just want to prey off of people who have talent that you don't, in my opinion. Like, I, I really don't see any value in paying somebody else to help do that when you can collaborate with people. There's tons of people like me I have now found across the whole U.S. It's a free platform. They will interview you. They put your shit, that audio, onto whatever. They give it to you to use. There are some people that want to say, guess what, I did this for you, so now you need to come home. <laughs> but I don't fucking believe in doing that because we can all benefit from this. The world gets to know who you are, and you still get to actually have that money. I wouldn't pay a carpenter, all right? I wouldn't tell a carpenter, show up to my house, and you have to pay me to build the house, and then I might give you a percentage of what it is that you built me. So if we use that analogy, and everything that we do, the music industry could grow stronger, but it's actually hoping that bands agree that they don't have to do that. Like, there's a new fad or trend, I would say, going on, where bands are paying people to run their social media. Why? You're not... I get it, we're all busy, but like... Not that busy. You're right. <laughs> you can schedule posts. <laughs> but like, this is I, I where capitalism is evil. I can schedule 15 posts for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Every day. Cool. In one day. Take me an hour. Right. <laughs> so why would you pay a production company to promote you when you could do it yourself, right? Hey, man. Why didn't you think of this? Th thoughts of uh, production <laughs> companies. Griff's a lot having smarter having than we are. <laughs> <laughs> he knows this he shit. He understands it. Yeah. If, someone thinks, if, th if someone thinks some production companies has contacts, you know, that they want to pay to get those contacts or use, take advantage of that. Maybe, but 99.9% of the time. And if you, you know. write a well-articulated email, chances are that you actually get a response back. Or so if well, we're out. Look at them. There's no articulation. We're out. That's not true. You know, I mean, so... so Mary! <laughs> so moving forward, whatever you release, think about it before you decide to use a, a major... Pla we're on almost Can every... Can we pay you to do this? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I feel weird. That feels yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be a slut than a whore, I guess. I don't know. That sounds odd. Right? That's a 
okay then. It's but more integral. Like, yes. I don't know. That's a weird the thing. The answer is yes. Um, <laughs> We're comfortable with that. Uh, so, so here's the thing. Um, that we, you know, w once we release these things on YouTube, they're you yours to use. And we are now on almost all of those major platforms that you paid CD Paybly to put you out onto. So because you, sound guru guy, pull the audio and put it onto these other platforms that are free so that other people can hear you. How much is it? Yeah. How much? It's free! Oh, okay. I'm sorry. See, I grew up yeah, really, really sorry. fucking poor and, like, did homework in the dark and showered in the cold. And so, like, I'm all about free. And how do you do <laughs> things the best and the most efficient? So, like, if I can eat my breakfast cereal while I'm trying to bathe in the dark cold, then, you know, and still make sure that everybody has lunch and we get to school where it's warm, we're good. <laughs> what an analogy. And that's why I'm far more punk rock than most of the people oh. in this town who use their parents' money to play. <laughs> I'm an asshole, but that's all right. So, December 13th, you have a show, and what else then? <laughs> Well, we have bad projects. In fact, us four have another project. I was yeah, going to say, in. what other bands are you in? Many. Yeah, we're. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, if you want to play, you got to play in a bunch of dope bands, and then then you're in, everybody's in so many bands you can never get together to rehearse. No so, so, so what other bands are you in? None. You. Uh, you're fucking. Give them the list. You're going to give the list. Well, I'm in the three bands with these guys. Right, okay. Yeah. But list all of the bands that you're in. Oh, I don't know. Yes, you do. No. Space Face. I've been Space Face. I'm Which is great. They're a Bowie cover band. They yeah. are. I'm in Fun House with these two guys. Which is a Stooges and cover band, which is they're great. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot of Singers, man. I'm, I'm, really really I'm in a band really called so The Blues Nicks with him. The yeah. Blues Band. They're great. I'm in a band, an original band called Max Plankton, which he's also they're, sometimes They're great. great. They're great. They're great. <laughs> which band played 58 Below earlier? Blues Nicks. Okay, I thought so. They're just there, yeah. Um... Come have dinner with us next Technically, yeah. a nuclear bomb still. Oh, nuclear bombs. Uh, Larry's, uh, Larry's yeah. in that band. Bombs. That's another band. That They're great. <laughs> Which is all the whole band. Everybody yeah. there except for Frankie Nice, which position. Yeah. Uh, uh, nobody like, matters yeah. unless they come on the show. And that's kind of an art rock Just band. Saying. That's fun. That's about it, I think. I'm probably missing one of them. You're missing about five. I think you were like an eight of them. Yeah, there's a few more, but yeah. he's being yeah, humble. He's a, he's a church guitar vir virtuoso yeah. as well. Oh, that's, oh. True. that's true. <laughs> Figured out how to get me in church. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going for the music? My, no, my, you my parents would be me. I would have gone to church, too. <laughs> how about you? List, list, list the bands that you're in. I, I'm in this. I'm in the, the, uh, the Fun House doing the Iggy thing. Uh, Nuclear Brahms, and uh, I've got a band that has no name, but we've been working on it for like a year and a half, and uh, that's the name? Uh, yeah, the yes. name and the music, and, <laughs> Just the name. and uh, we're, we need a bass player. You need a bass player? Yeah. Well, that's two of them here. But it, we, we, were at, we rehearsed on Thursday afternoons, so it's a little difficult. Thursday afternoons? <laughs> in the city. In the city, yeah, so in my basement. But that, 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 that's all. That's when all. you say in the city, where the fuck are you talking? Because there are some people who are like, in the city! Long and that's Lakeshore no, Drive? Know, like, okay. Yeah. yeah. You can't get What's your city than Logan Square? No. No, we know. Driving yeah. around and trying to find parking around. What's your baby? Rainbow, 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 Rainbow James. Rainbow James. Rainbow James. Rainbow James. Yeah. That's, that's, a city that's my main project. It's nice stuff, rock. but it's it's good. It Alternative good rock, job. surfy a little maybe once in a while. Um, Incredible player. What do you play? He plays drums for us. That's like his fourth instrument. You know? <laughs> okay. It's like it's like oh way down the line. Well, can you play drums? Okay. <laughs> I don't really drum. He's I play guitar and sing. I don't really drum. Yeah. He's a great drummer. Well, we won't know until you come on the show. <laughs> great singer. Great singer. No, no, great he's a great player. Songwriter. And I also play the drums. Yeah. Okay. On the drums. Killer. Yeah. He does all the drums. Instruments. He plays bass. He, he plays guitar. He's a killer. Ariana Grande. Yeah, yeah. Then you put it out. I'm very self-centered. Nice. And he plays all the instruments. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I just have a good self-esteem. That's what my dad tells me. Right. <laughs> it's not self-centered. It's positive self-esteem. Self there's like a, confidence. There's a just a small difference between 
super conceited and narcissistic. I'm allowed to be <laughs> narcissistic. I, I accept and allow constructive criticism, but nobody yet has come toe to toe to me. So <laughs> I challenge people. I challenge them all the time, and everyone's like, okay. "How about you?" Uh, what do I do? You play guitar. I do. Yeah. Uh, he's he's. I mean, this guy. This guy is. I mean, and it happens all the time. People come to our gigs and they go. He's like the great punk rock guitar player. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a machine. And, and he, when he oh, started, so I, I had to pull him into it. He was doing, you know, hot blooded and shit. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I played. I didn't know you. Well, we used to joke about that. But, but no, he no, was bad he, company. I played a little no, humble, pie, humble pie. Bad, humble pie was your humble name. pie was my yeah. That, that's where I was. But once I got it. once we got him in the in the, I mean he, he's and he's he's. Solid, Actually, man. I uh, I retired for a few years, uh, started a family, and uh, I was I was fortunate enough to be pulled back into the the, the scene with him, and he's uh, I replaced a, a Rob who was uh, one of the founding members of uh, Benduza. Uh, yeah, Benduza, which was uh, the precursor to uh, Funhouse. Funhouse, yeah. Funhouse. We're all in that and uh, yeah, so I've been back ever since, and. So yeah, Banduza, Funhouse, Two Browns. Turn of the Pirates, Nuclear Browns, and <laughs> you need anybody else that wants you put, you, put you those just, bands and we don't have to change and places. You just try, awesome. You just try to keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> just meet the ball. Keep the eye on the ball. Don't try not to hit it too hard. <laughs> when, you, when you're on stage with all these guys, you're looking at them going, Dave's not in costume. You wonder what band did I do? Yeah, yeah. What kind of band? What's the we do? We do have that. A good, a good Halloween. I get invited to a lot of uh, uh, what is it? blues Black projects, company. and I and I, I don't have time I like for that. I just don't have time for that. He says. Yeah. So, how many of you have children? You're not you're not talking about my girlfriend, right? Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Where'd you order her from? Oh. Oh. We're totally getting kicked oh. off of everything. Oh. Technically I don't have children they're Melania. <laughs> my, kid, my kids are grown. Is she over eighteen? No, but they Who were children. The they yes. were children. Yes. Did yes. you expose them to this music? Sure. And I ask because a lot of what we get is flack. From a lot of, uh, from a lot of people, they're like, "You're evil, and how are you introducing your children to this?" I'm like, "You're a grown ass person in the punk scene. When did you listen to it?" His kids come. To the Honestly, uh, my kids, my kids discovered it um, at some point. I didn't really say, "Yeah, your dad's a punk rock and fire. Huh. <laughs> but they did discover it, and uh, they do come out to the shows quite actively, and they bring all their friends, and their friends <laughs> are. Their friends usually are, are pretty big fans of ours, and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a yeah. <laughs> well, the common the common thing is is uh, that uh, a lot of their friends say, you know, I knew your bit dad played guitar, but I didn't know he played guitar. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, no, seriously, that's that, good. That's, You're speaking I, to I've these heard people. that through the acoustic from guitar a, from a lot of her, uh, <laughs> a lot of their friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're like my yeah. age or younger. Well, a lot of these kids, I, I saw them since they were little kids, you know, and I've seen them growing up, and then uh, they never saw me perform until they were adults. My son has had a mohawk since he was two years old, and he will not let me change it. He is now going to be eight in January, and he is that. That is his thing. He fucking loves Godzilla and giant monster music, like movies, fucking punk rock music, and this kid goes hard in the pit. Like, we've, not a joke, I can't keep up with this kid. He has a few favorite local bands that have given him merch that they've made special, like, for him, and he, like, saved up his money so that when that Texas band came, he could buy their merch, and he legit bought merch, and he's like, I oh want to support you. And I was like, oh, oh my god. That's very cool. So we like, could use a Tabali player. <laughs> <laughs> but for us, music is our life. From us playing it, to making it, to the art that we make at home, to us encouraging them to play music. But we get a lot of flack from our own sort of other parents that are like, mm. that's evil. And I'm like, you're boring. 
So I wanted to know if other parents exposed their children to this or if I'm just some weirdo who's like, I think you should grow up doing these things. We've, we've had people bring their kids to shows that are, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah. like I mean, little, little kids and they're dancing around in front of the stage yeah, and they're like, time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our kids love it and they sing along and they want, like, for, and they listen to everything. They can tell you classical composers and what that <laughs> shit was written oh. to, like, current stuff to, you know, old rock to ska to everything. They they like to know things. I, 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 I Somebody was talking the other day, I was listening to an interview with some musician, and he was talking about how younger people, by and large, are more accepting of, of more, more variety of music. Absolutely. Back in the day, it was like you had, oh, I'm this, I'm, I'm into this. I'm into you know I don't want, I don't want to hear any of that yeah. rap stuff you know I'm I'm into heavy metal you know or whatever and and it's 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 just all music that's how I was brought up it was all music we had I had all these different influences you know we, my sister was singing show tunes my brother was a, a folky you know like a, we went to church and sang you know so you know and then you know we had jazz we had rock everything and it was like to me it's all music and and so kids I think that that's their no normal inclination unless somebody tells them no. That's not good. Yeah. Exactly, the negativity, because kids are so unfiltered, you know, and then when they, uh, when they get older, me, and they get into, <laughs> I know. yeah, but when they get older, they get into these cliques, they say, you know, well, we only like this kind of music, we don't like that kind of music. So everything sort of just closes in, and they just become mo a lot more myopic about their taste, because they're influenced by their, like, their peers and things like that. But when the kids are young, they're they're unfiltered, and, and, and you know, there is no there is no it, incorrect mm. you know styles of music or or, or, or genres. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it depends on what kind of country. But country is though. rock right now. Country, 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 country post two thousand. No, we're not talking. That's like called pop country. One oh six one. All right. We're pop country is. Not a good job. Like Chris Stapleton can yes. eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> my first, my first year in the Lewis Records was, was, was a live record. It was all country, um, all country songs. My daughter got told she couldn't wear our shirts to school anymore because it was advertisement. Well, who is that? Their teachers, really? Their teachers must not want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe to me with me because Lily has worn her shirt to school. <laughs> and and Alex wears his mohawk. That's the same, that sh same shirt. She can't wear it to school. Tomorrow. Really? Really. It's advertisement. Oh. Why can't you wear a shirt with an advertisement? Yeah, See, that's because they want to They're not being paid show. anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So in closing. Oh. <laughs> this ends? Dude, I know. <laughs> Just the camera does. If it's you want to sit around. I mean. We, it's we, we can sit can. here and shoot the shit. Um, <laughs> so in closing, people can find you on Facebook, Reverb Nation. You have a website, yes? No. <laughs> nope. Facebook. Facebook Reverb Nation and, yeah. and just the Scott Kid. Yeah. And Yay. December 13th. Yes. At the, at the, at the yeah. empty bottles. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. to spell, write your fucking name in cursive, <laughs> do all of the important things. Remember to vote within the next upcoming yes, week yes, so that we can continue follow. to change. You're not sheep even though they want you to be and they keep giving you pills to believe you are. <laughs> Don't drink the water. <laughs> K thanks, bye! We'll see you next week.